This project was funded in part from a USDA Organic Research and Extension Initiative. Members of the research team in Maine included Greg Kohler, Peter Lugner, Pat McManus, Fung Gang, and myself. The orchard was planted in 2007 and transitioned to the organic production system in 2009. We selected this orchard for its isolation from other orchards at the farm and because it was planted a Honeycrisp and Snow Sweet, two varieties that are not highly susceptible to scab. It also has a row of Northern Spy. This orchard is a high density orchard with mostly dwarfing rootstocks. In the summer of 2009, we started a research project on organic weed control methods. Bark mulch was applied in a thick band about five feet wide and six inches deep. It completely suppressed weeds in the first year. We tried to find a cheaper source of mulch, but because of the need to start the study at a particular date, we were forced to buy what was available. Also in this summer, we applied the new OMRI approved herbicide called Green Match, which contains the active ingredient D-limonene. It's a burn down herbicide that effectively suppressed weeds when applied at the labeled rate, as shown in the photo in the set of trees behind the mulched trees. The herbicide was also applied to half of the mulched plots before the mulch was applied. Periodically through each of the growing seasons, the orchard was mowed to cut back weeds. This photo shows the effectiveness of a cheaper type of mulch called Ramia wood chips. This type of mulch has been used in the organic orchard at the University of Vermont. We continued the study through the next two years to measure the long-term effectiveness of the mulch and herbicide on weed suppression and tree growth. This photo shows the weed control under the mulch trees in the foreground and the effectiveness of the herbicide application in the trees in the background. This was in the third year of the study. The single application of mulch suppressed weeds very effectively in 2009 and 2010. By 2011, the weeds began to grow through the mulch in some spots. Weed growth in the mulch was strong in some spots, as shown in this photo photograph taken in 2011. But in most of the plots, the mulch continued to suppress weeds. In this year, half the mulch plots received herbicide and the other half did not. Herbicide continued to work in all years. Because the weeds grew back a few weeks after application, a second or third application was needed for additional weed control. In this study, there were two herbicide strategies. In one set of trees, we applied herbicide in June and July for a total of two times during the season. In another set of trees, herbicide was applied in June, July, and August or September for a total of three times. The Green Match label recommends application when weeds are small. Since the weeds were tall by the time we started herbicide applications, weeds were first cut back before application in 2009 and 2010. In 2011, we applied the herbicide to tall weeds and found that it worked well. Most of the weeds in this orchard were grasses, which seemed to be easily suppressed by the herbicide. To compare how well each method worked, we measured the amount of green or living weeds in a measured area under each set of trees. Weeds were cut at the soil line, dried in an oven, and then weighed for comparison. We found that weed growth was most abundant in June prior to the first mowing or herbicide application. Mowing and herbicide substantially reduced the amount of weed growth, but the weeds eventually grew back with the herbicide but this uh, regrowth later in the su summer was weaker than earlier in the season due to um, lack of rainfall. Weed growth with the three herbicide applications was less than with the two applications. The mulch reduced the amount of weed growth by more than half in 2010 and by roughly half in 2011. Soil moisture was measured with each weed control method by using tensiometers. The tensiometer indicates tension caused by soil drying, so a higher number indicates less soil moisture. In our soil, a reading of 10 indicates wet soil, 
20 to 30 coincides with a good level of soil moisture, and readings above 50 occur during periods of insufficient rainfall. This site was not irrigated, so there were large fluctuations in soil moisture during the season. Soil moisture readings were lowest in the mulch plots, indicating more soil moisture. Readings remained below 60 throughout the 2010 season in mulch plots. Herbicide slightly increased soil moisture compared to mowed sod, but as weeds grew back, it became as dry as the mowed plot. Three applications of herbicide increased soil moisture in late July and August compared to the plots that received only two applications. In 2011, soil moisture was similar in the different weed management strategies, except in early August during a dried spell when it was greater in the mulched plots than with the herbicide or the mowed sod. Mulch increased leaf and soil concentrations of potassium and manganese, but not other nutrients. Soil pH and organic matter were not affected by weed management strategy. As an easy way to indicate tree size, we measured trunk diameter at what fo one foot above the soil line. There was a steady increase in trunk diameter in all trees over the course of the study. The two sets of mulched trees were larger than the other trees in 2010 and 2011. However, the mulched trees that had also received herbicide prior to mulch application were the same size as the mulched trees that received no herbicide. Herbicide did not result in larger tree size compared to the mowed sod. Trees in this orchard have been slow to bear fruit. Several possible reasons exist for this and could include the lack of irrigation, the organic production system, and the rootstock M26, which is not very precocious. Yield in 2011 was very low with most trees having no fruit. Yield in 2011, which is shown in the graph, was greater than 2010 and did not exceed 20 bushels per acre with any weed management strategy. Yield differences did not occur between mowed sod herbicide, or mulched trees. Green match herbicide costs per acre are variable depending on the amount of treated area and cost per gallon. Recent price quotes indicate a cost per gallon ranging from $32 to $43. In our study, we applied five and a quarter gallons and 35 gallons of water in a narrow band in our one acre orchard. Using our rates of application, Green match material costs would be $160 to $228 per acre for each application. The cost of mulch is highly variable, but cheap sources can be found. The rates of application in this study were high, but resulted in nearly complete weed suppression throughout most of the study. Lower rates of mulching may reduce the costs of the materials, but I'm not sure if it would work as well as it did in this study. For more information on this topic, please contact Renee Moran at 207-933-2100 or by email at rmoran at maine.edu. Thank you.